looks right. This side looks damaged. Looks like this side is missing a part. off that pyramid. Do you think he just fell, Nancy? Or was he pushed? Sounds like you need to find out about hospital visiting hours. Yeah, but you'd better get the lowdown from Joanna first. George is right. She is your supervisor, after all. Hello, Nancy. Why did Mexico choose to lend the monolith to Beach Hill and not some other museum? Joanna Riggs outbid everyone. I had no idea a small museum like Beach Hill could afford such an expensive arrangement. Do you know much about Maya glyphs? You've got me there. I know Spanish, English, Portuguese, and several indigenous languages, including a Quiche and Nahuatl, but I have yet to learn the language of glyphs. Have you heard that Bacal carving was stolen from the museum? Well, I heard the alarms going off, but it wasn't until Henry called me that I heard the news. You don't sound very concerned about all of this. I was running late. I just figured somebody tripped a wire and I kept going. I'll need to alert the police so they can ask you some questions. I have diplomatic immunity, so I do not have to answer any questions. But I will because I have nothing to hide. Don't you care about the disappearance of such a rare Maya artifact? That artifact was lost to me as soon as he'd left Mexican soil. So my friend Pakal goes underground for a while until he is sold again. Suddenly, he turns up in Amsterdam or Hong Kong. Unless he is rightfully repatriated to Mexico, what's the difference? Have you heard? Henrik van der Heun fell off the pyramid at the museum. He's in the hospital with a mysterious head injury. That is terrible news. I hope it's not too serious. Do you consider Henrik a conquistador? Along with Joanna Riggs and Sinclair? Henrik is a student of my culture and my heritage. I'm not trying to buy and sell it. We don't agree on everything, especially not baseball. But I have nothing against him. I should get back to the museum. Goodbye. First the Pakal carving is stolen, and now my star glyph man bumps his head and forgets his own name? What's next, Nancy? Del Rio pulls the plug on the monolith? The board clams up on my funding. My mother posts my old prom pictures on the internet. Take it easy, Joanna. I'm sure everything is going to be okay. What I need from you right now is action, not commentary, Nancy. Will you follow up with the hospital and see if there's anything we can do to get Henrik's marbles back? I'll call right away. You can also pick up Henrik's mail if he gets any. Keep the lab in order and... Just try to help me keep the entire museum from going up in smoke. I've got work to do. Carpe diem. You have voicemail. Press. This message is for Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. This is Nurse Bluefoot calling from Eleanor Roosevelt Memorial Hospital in regards to Henrik van der Heun. I believe you're a colleague of his. Since Mr. van der Heun was admitted, he has repeated your name several times in states of semi-consciousness. As we've been unable to contact any of his family members, we're hoping you might be willing to act as Henrik's support person as he begins the difficult process of restoring his memory. Please call me as soon as possible to discuss this. My direct line is 202-555-4000. Thank you. To replay messages, press zero. This is Nurse Bluefoot. Nurse Bluefoot, this is Nancy Drew. You left me a message regarding Henrik van der Heun. How is he? Nancy Drew? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I'm so relieved. We've been unable to locate any family members, and we do like amnesia patients to have at least one personal support person when they begin reality orientation. What's reality orientation? Well, reality orientation is a kind of treatment that helps a patient get reacquainted with the facts and circumstances of his or her life. Henrik has not actually lost his memory. It's just that his brain is injured in such a way that he can't access the place where the memories are stored. I see. So we need to help him find the trail of crumbs. Is that it? Exactly. First, we do repetitive memory exercises to help Henrik relearn the basic facts, like his name and address, the name of his parakeet, if he has one, 
the date, and so on. Second, we try to stimulate Henrik's sensory memories in order to help trigger or find the way back to his cognitive memories. What are sensory memories? A sensory memory is like it sounds, something that is familiar, that you recognize by sight or touch, smell or sound or... Oh, what is that last one? Oh, yes, taste. A cognitive memory is something that you know or remember intellectually. For example, how do you know the name of this planet? Somewhere along the way, you learn that it's called Earth, and you just remember. But say you bump your head and forget the name of this planet. You don't know where in the solar system you're floating. That would be most unfortunate. Exactly. But then I show you a picture of our marvelous blue and green globe. Suddenly you remember. That glorious sight is Earth. I live on the planet Earth. This is how a sensory memory can trigger a cognitive or intellectual one. I still don't understand where I come in. You can't help Henrik remember his childhood. But you can probably help him remember his work. And who knows where that will take him. (laughs) All roads lead to Rome, as they say. One great tool is the Reality Orientation Board. This is a place to post information and pictures for the patient to look at over a period of time. You may want to bring in images or photos to place on the board. Things from the museum, perhaps. I see. Well, I'll be happy to help in any way I can. When are visiting hours? Visiting hours are 10 to 4 every day. If the patient is not engaged in treatment and if he seems stable. Great. Uh, Is there anything else? Just remember, Henrik's brain has been knocked around like a peanut in its shell. He may have attention difficulties, headaches, uh, anxiety. Sometimes he may seem giddy, too. We need to keep these conditions in check. Don't push him too hard, or he may have some kind of meltdown. Thanks for the warning, Nurse Bluefoot. Be well. Keep it real. Max speaking. Hi, do you sell a compound of mercury and sulfur? Mercuric sulfide? Oh, we sure do. How much do you need? Uh, first things first. What accounts this for? Actually, I didn't call to place an order. I just need some information on Beach Hill's ordering history. Well, hello there, Beach Hill. Hey, you're not Sunny June. Whatever happened to that guy? I suppose he caught a ride on a flying saucer, eh? <laughs> what a riot. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, you don't need to reorder, do you? Unless you ate last week's shipment for breakfast, that is. You're sure it was last week? Oh, that's what it says here. Do you know who placed that order? The initials on the order are J.R. Was the package shipped to the museum? Uh, oh, oops, I guess we didn't ship it at all. It looks like the package was picked up here at the warehouse. So there hasn't been a holdup at the distributor or anything like that? Holdup? Oh, I don't know where you heard that. We've got enough mercuric sulfide in-house to sink a ship. Can you remember anything about the person who picked up the package? Hmm. Uh, I sure can't. Guess I must have been at lunch or something. Well, thanks for your help. Sure thing. I hope there wasn't any problem with the stuff, was there? We only used a top-grade mercuric sulfide. Judging by the impression it left, I'd have to agree that the quality was fine. Well, you sound a little green in the chemicals department, if you don't mind my saying so. I hope you know that mercuric sulfide is highly toxic. Makes you crazy. Toxic? Oh, ah. Uh, looks like I've got another call coming in here. You give us a call in about four months or so when you start to run out, okie doke? And don't forget to keep it real. You look familiar. Is it time for my snack? Hi, Henrik. I'm Nancy. We met at Beach Hill before your head injury. Beach Hill? Beach Hill is a museum here in Washington, D.C. The curator's name is Joanna Riggs. You were working there, and that's where your accident happened. Do you remember anything about the accident? Joanna Riggs, is that the woman who called to pick my brain for an access code? Joanna called? What did you tell her? Where in my poor banged up head would I be keeping access codes? I don't 
even remember my own birthday. So if you're here to squeeze me for details, you're wasting your time. Actually, Nurse Bluthlet thinks with regular visits, I may be able to help you get your memory back more quickly. How, pray tell, do you intend to do that? I'll visit, we'll talk, sometimes I'll bring you pictures. Pictures? Well, isn't this nice? Come on, Henrik, you'll feel much better once things start coming back to you. I've got a picture with me if you'd like to give it a try. Fine, I'll do it. Great. These are Maya glyphs, like the ones you used to translate. Now, don't be upset if you don't know how to read them anymore. I can tell you what they mean. I know what they mean, dear. I wrote them. I'm sure you have written them at one time or another in your career. So, what do you think this is all about? The magician suffers yellow death. Your translator is sloppy. I should know. I am the author of the original work. The author? What are you talking about? That first glyph is the fool, not the magician. Furthermore, any decent epigrapher knows those glyphs refer to the infamous plague of oozing hives. A fitting curse for a fool, don't you think? I rather like it. Henrik, this note was found at a crime scene. Are you telling me you left it there? I don't remember. I'm investigating the theft of the Bacall carving. Please, Henrik, try to remember something. Who in the world is Pakal? Oh, my head. Oh, the pressure. I can't take any more today, Nancy. Okay, it's time for some memory therapy. Nancy, could you come back tomorrow? It's a fiasco, just as I feared. Oh, I'm sick, sick, sick about the whole thing. Yes, your fears seem to have been quite visionary. I was in the museum when it happened. Have you spoken to the police? I told them everything I know. I mean, I coughed up my brains right there on the table. So, do you think this is linked to the thefts in Topeka and New Mexico? That awful red hand was left on Prudence Rutherford's jewelry box in Topeka and on the display case in the museum in New Mexico. What's the chance they're not connected? Do you know Prudence Rutherford personally? Oh, we saw each other at functions now and then. Poor Prudence. She adored that necklace. What's the name of the museum in New Mexico? The Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. They had a beautiful collection up there, worth a bundle, too. I appraised some pieces for them a few years back. Why do you think the thief is leaving this red handprint? To be a gruesome scoundrel? Joanna says you performed an act of wizardry in helping Beach Hill acquire the Pakal carving. Getting those provenance docks together was a pig and a half. Oh, they're on the up and up, I assure you. But ah, uh, to have been at the height of my career back before the crackdown, those were the days. Uh... Pig and a half? Maybe sometime I'll tell you a sad story I call How Mexico Lost Its Sense of Humor. Not today, though, Nancy. Alejandro says you're unethical, a modern-day conquistador, that you're robbing Mexico of its cultural history. <laughs> and I say Alejandro is the real bully of the playground, a lunch money extortionist who loves nothing more than to see the other boys and girls go hungry. When you sell a piece of art, what kind of commission do you get? Standard, 10%. It's no king's ransom. Unless, of course, you sell something for a million bucks. Too bad I'm not allowed to put that monolith on the market, huh? I need a photo of the Pakal carving. Do you have one? Uh, Joanna took the official print for her insurance claim, but I have a couple extras. Here you go. Keep up the good work. Buenos dias. Do you know what cinnabar is? The red powder that the Maya used? Sure, I know it. They use it at Beach Hill too, do they not? Cinnabar was used to make the red handprint that was left at the scene of the Pakal theft. What is your point? I think Joanna may have been less than truthful with me. Have you called the police? I don't want to jump to conclusions. Of course. Sister Joanna couldn't possibly be a thief now, could she? I should get back to the museum. Yes, you should. You have voicemail. Nancy? It's Joanna. The police are done giving me the third degree, but now the board has suspended me. To, to make a long story short, I'm forbidden to set foot in the museum. Could you please call Franklin Rose and try to reason with him? If we don't get a move on, this exhibit is going straight down the tubes. To replay messages, press zero. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew, calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. 
Nancy, you must be psychic. I was just getting ready to call you myself. Oh, really? Why? I feel I should apologize for the situation that's going on at the museum, dear. I really did think we were setting you up with a nice little internship, a breather from your casework, but instead it looks like we've fed you to the lions. Well, in all my travels, I still haven't found a mystery-free zone, Mr. Rose. Speaking of travel, I got a postcard from your father in Ouagadougou. Apparently, Burkina Faso has become the cultural darling of West Africa. He must be having quite an adventure. Like father, like daughter. Anyway, Mr. Rose, I'm calling about Joanna. I think I know what you're going to say, Nancy. Um, let me be frank. Joanna Riggs has been in the doghouse with the board for months. Her thirst for acclaim has led her to gamble the future and the reputation of Beach Hill time and again. Now that we've lost the Pakal carving, one of our most notable pieces, well, she's just got to be stopped. Don't you believe she's genuinely concerned about the welfare of the museum? Good intentions are no substitute for integrity and sound judgment, Nancy. Look, I've got a client waiting, Nancy. What we need now is for you to take up the slack. I've spoken to the rest of the board, and we've agreed that the best thing is to put you in charge. But Mr. Rose, I don't think Joanna is responsible for the Pakal theft. She shouldn't be punished. She's not being punished, dear. In legal terms, we're suspending her in abundance of caution, so she won't do any more damage to Beach Hill's reputation or her own. We're counting on you to catch this thief red-handed. Ha ha. Just kidding, kiddo. If you can get the Pakal back, we'll see about giving Ms. Riggs another chance. That seems fair, doesn't it? It's a deal, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo.